And then forgiveness is searching for the real person beneath the evil mask. <laughs> when we've been wrong, you know what we like to do? We like to caricature our wrongdoer. We begin to emphasize all the bad things about them. We twist anything that looks remotely good. We're very quickly able to impugn their every motive. We, we see them only and always in one way. We often let our hurt and our anger even distort our view of our loved one. And we, we start seeing them as a monster who we want to hurt in return. But if we would just stop and really be able to see our loved one, we wouldn't want to hurt them. It would be easy for us to decide not to hurt them because the process of forgiveness requires that we look for the real person behind the caricature or the mask that we've put on them and we've created in our own minds. And what we see is that that person, they're not, they, they're, they've not only hurt you, but they've also been hurt in life. Come on. We see that they are weak, that they are needy, that they are fallible, that they are human. And all of a sudden, all the reasons that we have in our hearts that tend toward malice, all of a sudden we start thinking, man, I need to have mercy on this person because really they're a whole lot like me. How many of you see what I'm talking about today? Come on. And then lastly, forgiveness is our moral obligation as believers. We have to forgive, you know. Now, I know you guys never get in a fuss with your spouses or people you love, but on occasion, Jereen and I do get in a little disagree, uh, discussion, okay? And I can tell by the look on her face when I say, well, Jereen, are you going to forgive me? She'll do something like this. You know God's word says I have to. Come on. You've got to forgive. God made it clear. Our forgiveness from him is related to our forgiveness for others. Let me just read the scripture to you. Matthew 6, 14, it says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Boy, how many of you want to be forgiven? I do. I've got so much I need to be forgiven. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Apparently, God knew that Christians would need a motivation to be able to say, listen, I need to go ahead and forgive. Come on. Because I'm not saying that it's easy, right? But if you want a spiritual reboot, if you want a spiritual restart, church, we've got to learn how to forgive. Okay, that's the biggie. That's the heavy for today. Tell your neighbor everything else is going to be all right. Amen. Amen. God is good. Number two, if you want a spiritual reboot in 2020, you need to seek help if you need it. There are a lot of people who go through life carrying pain and burdens and they don't realize that it's possible for them to lay them down. Years ago, a man was carrying a heavy burden, you know, back before the days of automobiles and all like that. He had a big old pack on a sack on his back and he was carrying it to town and he was struggling underneath the weight of it and pretty soon a farmer comes along with a horse and a wagon and he, he tells the gentleman he says sir why don't you just you know put your put your uh, load up in here and climb up in here and and the, and the man said no I can't do that I'm going to just go on just this way why would someone do that Barney Fife would say, that guy's nuts. Right? Who would do that? But did you know that a lot of people live their life that way? God will send people by. God will send ministries by. Come on, I'm going to tell you something. God sent Jesus Christ, His only Son, by. And He said, cast your burden on me and put it on me. Let me care for you. Come on. Amen. We have Jesus, first of all, to help bear our burdens and carry our burdens. But I'm just here today to tell you that if you need help in life, go get some help somewhere. Why do people continue on in life with issues and struggles and problems and difficulties and marital problems and fights and addictions? and pro Listen, there's help available somewhere in the world. Amen. Go, buy, go, to, go to a Christian bookstore. Buy some books on the subject. Come on. Find a good Christian counselor that can help you along. It's amazing what will even happen in your life if you'll come to the front of a congregation and tell a brother or sister, man, I just need some prayer. 
Would you pray for me? And they begin to pray. It's amazing how God can lift that burden that you're carrying off of you and, and, and help you get along. I'm just telling you that there's help available. Whatever the issue is in anyone's life, there's help available. Come on. If you believe that, give the Lord Jesus a hand of praise today. There's biblical counseling. There's celebrate recovery. Amen. Find a mentor. Amen. Let me read a couple of verses quickly today. Proverbs 19, 20 says, Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. Proverbs 15, 22 says, Without counsel, plans go away. But in the multitude of counsel, they are established. Another version says, In the multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. I believe in the wisdom of, of the body of Christ, your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Come on. We need that. And then number three, if you're going to reboot your family life, you've got to start some healthy habits. I'm going to give you four habits you can start today that will help your family life get absolutely better. A few months back, Jerrine and I were out to eat, and there was a family there. It was a mom and a dad and, and three beautiful kids, looked like maybe 10, 11, and 12-year-old, and, and they were eating in a, in a pretty nice restaurant. And, but the amazing thing was all five of these individuals had their cell phone out. The only person that they spoke to the entire meal was the waitress who came and brought them their stuff. They literally were plastered to those cell phones. Let me tell you something, that is not a good way to run a family come on somebody I read an article one time that says that, that, that was asking the question how is it that people feel loved in their life and you know we would think well you know we need people to tell us they love us and that's important right I'm not knocking that right but the most important key according to this author was was that if when people come home from their day if there's somebody there to ask them how their day went how was your day what was it like? What went on in your day? My, my wife is the queen of this. She's amazing at this. And I remember one time she was talking to my son Derek. Derek was, I don't know, 18 years old. And she was asking him, you know, the questions. And he was like, what's with the 20 questions? And Jereen just says, well, you know, those 20 questions are all saying to you the same thing. I love you. I care about you. And you know something? We need that in our families, right? To ask how things are going. How is life? And start communicating. Amen. That is an incredibly healthy habit that we can have in our lives that will make your family members feel connected and loved. And did you know even in the body of Christ we can do that? You say, well, what, how do I do that? Well, you know, maybe if, if you're a single person, just text somebody else and say, how was your day today? I thought of you. I'm praying for you. Are you okay? How was life? You see what I'm saying? All those little things make a person feel loved and cared for. And then let me just say this today. It's time to shut the television off and eat dinner as a family. Come on. Shut the TV off and sit down and eat dinner as a family. Leave your phones in the bedroom and learn how to laugh and learn how to share and learn how, how fun that could be. And don't gobble down your food, all right? This is, is eat slow and talk a lot, all right? Enjoy life. Have a second piece of pie, all right? Come on. And then let me give advice to every person who's married Valentine's Day is coming, guys. Come on. We've got to be prepared and we've got to be ready. I think that husbands ought to date their wives. I'm going to talk about Cedric for a minute. Man, I love that. Don't you love Cedric? He was here yesterday running the sound for the memorial service. And I said, well, where are you headed? He says, i got to take Josie to lunch. Ah. Oh. I said, are you taking her to Subway? He said, no. How many know that's a good husband? Come on, somebody. Date your wife. Amen. I, I tell you, I, I love it when my wife just says, let's go out. Come on. And we get together. We change life a little bit. And we enjoy some good food together. And let me tell you the last one. You've got to learn how to, life and, learn how to laugh and have fun in life. Tell your neighbor it's okay to have fun. 
Who likes fun? Raise your hand. It's okay to have fun. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to enjoy things. Go roller skating. Go ice skating. Go play putt-putt golf. I don't know what you do to have fun. Go take in a good, clean movie. I don't know. But if all life is is paying the bills and cleaning the garage and mowing the yard, and, and come on, that gets boring after a while. We need to be together and have fun. Come on, I think that's a good foundation today.